Are you struggling to find the best settings for Modern Warfare 3? Well, I'm on console and I got the secret sauce. The three main important settings we're going to be talking about is controller settings, graphics, and audio. But let's get right into it. There's a new setting in controllers that we'll talk about in a second. But to start off, you want to edit your button layout and make sure it's on the right thing. I play on tactical, therefore I have it on tactical flipped. And to make sure it's on flip, all you have to do is make sure this is enabled. Flip L1 and L2 and R1, R2. This basically switches your bumpers and triggers. So I shoot with L1, R1 versus the opposite. Controller vibration, make sure to have this off. There's no really an advantage to having this on. And the only thing it could be is quite distracting. If you prefer to have it on, you know, that's all you. But I personally think you shouldn't really be playing with vibration, especially if you're trying to be the best. For trigger effect, I have it on full haptics. And this is the new setting they've implemented into Modern Warfare 3. It's going to be the test stick dead zone. So you can actually test the dead zone and you can kind of mess around with this. You can see what your dead zone is looking like if you have stick drift or not. But to get it deeper into this, for my left stick minimum, I like to have it on a very low. I usually have it on two. And for my left stick max, I have it on 75. Now, this what basically this does is like when I move my stick, I don't have to go all the way out. All I have to do is reach his red zone. It's all the way and reaches his, it reaches his max. So this is really good with like movement. Like I'm moving around. I'm moving my stick around. I'm swiping my left stick around, trying to hit nice movement. I'm hitting that max a lot quicker. It doesn't require me to go all the way to the end. To show you guys an example, if I put my left stick max back to 100, so now you see I got to go all the way out of the circle. But if I lower it back to 75, now all I have to do is go to that red. That the red is the max right there. I reached the max a lot quicker. The thing is, and it's very tricky. You don't want to go too low because once you start to go too low, you're gonna notice your. It's gonna mess around with your movement a little bit. You're, it's gonna feel a little weird and off. So therefore, I like to have mine around 70, 75, maybe 80 if you're feeling it's too much. But 75 is a good, good balance. For my right stick minimum, I like to have it between four and five dead zone. Five is kind of like the default. I like to lower just a little bit. So I have it on four. This is obviously going to be like your aiming stick. And then for my right stick max, I do not like to mess with this one. You do not want to touch this one. I've lowered it before. It can kind of make your aim a little bit better, but then you kind of lose that precise aim. For your L2 button dead zone and R2, make sure this is at zero. That's a no-brainer. Now for aiming, this is like an important thing. I was a Call of Duty professional player, so I have a lot of insight on this. I was one of the best, two-time world champion, enough of me. But a lot of pros usually play on 661. This is kind of like the go-to sense where it's a good balance of, you know, you can still swipe or stick around. And there's another setting that helps with this, which we'll be talking about shortly but also you get to be precise and slow and your centering gets to be really good so i usually recommend between six to eight i, I say six seven or eight like for example i've been playing on seven seven point nine because it's a little bit more fun but i'm no longer competing so therefore to me it's like it's fine it, it gets the job done uh, but if you're looking for like a perfect sense or you're trying to like work with something six six one is a good 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 place to start next tested multiplier you can leave this at one one the next thing we're going to be talking about here is the aim response curve type. Now, this has been something that pro players have been using for years. I've been using for years, and this is like, it's it's very, very, very good. Uh, I never really recommend linear, either standard or dynamic. But basically what this does to explain it in a very simple way, it, it like goes fast. So when you move your stick, your aim stick, it goes fast and then it slows down at the end. So there's graphs on this on Google. You can Google it, but that's basically what it does. So as a pro, when you're trying to snap on players, you can kind of get that snap ability where you move swipe or stick around, but it's going to allow you to be that precise. So as soon as you start stopping the stick, it's going to kind of be a little bit more precise. So it's really nice. So make sure to have this on dynamic. It's going to maybe get a little bit, you have to get used to it, but once you do, it's definitely going to be worth it. For aim assist type, I definitely like default. Black Ops used to be the wave at some point of time, but Black Ops kind of got nerfed. I think default is just the way to go for now. For gameplay, make sure you have automatic tactical sprint. This is going to increase your movement. It's going to make your movement a lot better. So if you're not competing at a pro level, because I'm not sure if this is allowed, definitely have this setting on. I like to have grounded mantle off, so it kind of negates a little bit too much of the random mantling on the map. Uh, I got this on partial off invert slide and dive behavior so back in mw2 a lot of people played on inverted because diving was more beneficial than sliding and slide canceling because there wasn't but now in mw3 you can actually slide cancel so you want to go back to having this on standard slide cancel is the old way you slide jump jump so you definitely want to have this on standard and practice that slide canceling 
Uh, plunging underwater, free is definitely better. Sprinting door bash, make sure to have that on. Mantle only, movement base is nice, but mantle only. In, in, in this game, you mantle so fast, just have it on mantle only. This is all pretty much default for interact reload behavior. You can have it tapped to reload. In Warzone, usually people use prioritize to interact, but you don't need to use that. And this is all these settings are pretty much default. Now, for the next big things we're going to be talking about is graphics, details, and textures. On demand texture streaming, you definitely want to have this on, especially on console. This doesn't matter as much on PC, but definitely have this setting on for better graphics, better quality. Now, world motion, motion blur off, weapon motion blur off, fill grain zero. This is going to help make your game and your screen look more clear. This gives you no advantage at all. It just makes it harder for you. Depth of field off, fidelity cast on, fidelity FX cast strength. I have this on 100. This is going to make your game look a lot more sharper so you're gonna be able to see it's gonna be easier to see people it's just overall i feel like gives that better field of view honestly guys a lot of these settings like i want you guys to perform the best you can and i want to give you guys the best like a, a, a capability too so i'm gonna be giving you guys like the best settings to really allow you to reach that your your potential your max potential uh for 120 hertz refresh rate make sure you have this on now i had a little hiccup where i needed to get some new hdmi cables 2.0s or 2.1s because i did not have this setting on my screen for you know for a day so i switched the hdmi cables out it came the setting came out came up now I'm, I'm able to play on 120 hertz for the people who maybe doesn't don't have the setting or are struggling with it so that's something to kill them keep in mind field of view i play on 120 because i'm a maniac but realistically if i were being serious about it i would play probably between a multiplayer like 100 103 105 maybe 107 max that's once you pass kind of 107 your your they say your aim assist starts to drop off a little bit i play 120 for fun because i'm not competing but that's just something to keep in mind ads field of view affected weapon field of view people some people say narrow is better because your gun looks bigger but you're able to see more of your screen i like wide because it looks cooler and the gun looks smaller <laughs> next first person camera movement at least 50 percent this is a huge because this is going to kind of reduce the shaking on your screen again another disadvantage i'm trying to help you guys have the best advantage possible so make sure to have this uh 50 which is the lowest and the brightness i mean you can kind of mess around with that depending i have mine on default but sometimes it does look a little dark so that's something you have to keep in mind now for audio home theater for me especially on console just feels like the best like i feel like i get a lot of good audio i feel like i can hear pretty well and it's not like blasting in my ear you know so which i really like for my volumes, I have my master volume at 100 and effects of volume at 100. Gameplay music, there's just no point of gameplay music. It doesn't really give you anything. It just sounds cool sometimes. It can be a little bit distracting or annoying. So I have it on zero. Dialogue volume at 60. This is your character calling out random stuff, which sometimes can be pretty informative. So I like to have that on. But it, you can put, you can test, you can run around, you can mess around with it, you know, put it 50, 56, 60, whatever you want effects volume at 100 voice chat volume at 50 so i can hear people talking and again cinematic vault music volume at zero now i have a knob to kind of move my volume up and down so i can kind of mess around with this but if you're going to turn either the effects or master volume all down make sure to do master over effects that's one thing i would recommend now there's a couple things i want to talk about and in interface really quickly so there's color customization and usually you can leave this in default you can kind of mess around with these colors if you did not know that like making your your team certain colors your enemies certain colors um but one thing i will say is something is pretty cool about this game is that you can put like color filters which makes the game a little bit more pop in it gives it kind of like extra saturation without like actually in game without having you to do like do it on your monitor or anything like that so something i used to do is filter two i put both and then you could put the world inten color intensity 100. So it's basically gonna make your game a little bit more vibrant. It's gonna make your game a little bit more pop in. And you're gonna definitely gonna notice a nice little difference. So try that out. Make sure to have your mini map shape squared over round. This is gonna make it look bigger on your on your screen, which is gonna be a pretty big W. And obviously make sure you have your mini map rotation on. Horizontal compass on, crosshairs on. And something you can actually do is pretty cool in this game and in NW2 is you can have a center dot and you can make it as big as you want. This is basically going to give you a little dot in the center of your screen uh, versus having no dot, which helps you like kind of center on people as you're running around the map and not aimed in. So usually I have the setting on, but I just keep it on default. I don't like when the dot's too big. And then if you go down to the telemetry settings, there's a four things you can put on your top left. You can put your server latency. So this is basically your ping. It'll appear in the top left so you can kind of see your ping. What are you pinging to the to the map constantly? Pack a loss, clock, connection meter, 
Um, the only one that I think it kind of helps is latency. So you kind of see, am I getting joked? Why am I pinging 99? You know, he can definitely see some of these things. I missed one thing and I knew I did. Go to, go to graphics, go to safe area. This is a little bit of a tip here, but you can obviously reduce the safe area as you can see here. Now, what does this basically, this, what this does is it gets your mini map closer to the center of your screen. And your mini map is one of the most important things in Call of Duty. It gives you so much information. And with red dots coming back, it, it's very important. So I like to bring in my safe area. I like to reduce it so everything is more towards the middle of my screen. So I don't have to like really stress my eyes or like move very far from the center of my screen to look at my mini map or look how much ammo I have left, etc. So I like to bring it back in closer together. Thank you guys so much for watching today's video. If this helped you, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Maybe even share it with a friend. I hope you guys have a fantastic rest of your day and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out.